So a couple of weeks ago, I showed you this video and so far in the process of all of these customs, I found a way to make a Brainiac. And this is just the progress of how it got to where it is. Cause usually I don't document this side of things and that's something I'm trying to change. I figured this would be way easier for you guys to see how I actually do things because usually I just do things as you can see. Uh, I found this, well, I had this Superman, excuse me, I had this McFarlane Mr. Freeze body just, like, floating around my, like, fodder desk. It's been a lot of places. And I was originally going to use this body, but I came to soon discover that it is entirely too tall for what I'm going for. And if you understand the scale I'm going for, I'm using Mezco Superman as a base. So I want all his villains, his rogues gallery to be either taller or in scale with him. I didn't even mention I'm using 3D printed pieces. The head and the shoulder armor is 3D printed. I'm going for a look between the animated series and Injustice look. And more so the comic style of Injustice, I guess. Not the video game one. I'm just trying to pull from a bunch of different like looks for Brainiac. Another reason I wanted to capture this process is because I totally pivoted from what you're looking at. I was trying to keep with the McFarlane style of Rogue's villains because McFarlane just makes good base bodies in my opinion. But along those lines, you do come with some scale issues. We all know McFarlane skews higher, like he wants his stuff to be seven inches for some reason. So along those lines, um, this guy was way too tall. So pretty much I did all of this for nothing. You're just looking at me, Dremel plastic. I'm like getting practice in, I guess. I guess if you wanted to do this yourself, I, you can see like how it's done. Like hopefully this can help you follow along. Some people might not mind a bigger scale. I just didn't want Brainiac to be... 10 feet tall he can be a little bit taller which is where i ended up getting to with the new body i used i just didn't want him to tower over superman like that because in most like iterations of brainiac he doesn't tower he's like a little bit taller or the same height the body swap ended up working in my favor because throughout this process of me testing this armor i trimmed too much plastic off and if you know anything about trimming you know you can always take away but you cannot add it was about this point where I was like, yeah, I got to pivot. And that's where I ended up with this War Machine body. It has the right amount of techno and the right amount of smooth I was going for. Again, I'm using like the animated series as like the base of my reference. But uh, like with me doing that too, I also cut off too much of the chest. I wanted to leave the bottom part of the chest mainly because it covered up the torso joint. To my surprise, the 3D printed parts fit directly over this. Someone on, I can't remember if it was Instagram or TikTok, but somebody asked me, was I leaving the War Machine shoulder pads under the shoulder pads? And a quick answer to that is yes. And they said, why? And I said, because it's my custom. I like the shoulder pads under the shoulder pads. It looks great to me. Um, if you want something done your way, if you have an idea you want to see executed, by all means, do it yourself. That's the best way you're going to get it done. This is all just test fitting, though. Um, you see the F, that means front and back. I don't know why the armor fit better one way over the other. If you remember back to the McFarlane body, I told you I trimmed too much plastic. I did the exact same thing here. I'm actually going to have to bust out my abs epoxy sculpt. I'm not the best sculptor and I don't even like sculpting, but I used it to fill in the gaps. I tried to 3D print something for the chest, but it was too thin. And every time I tried to mold it or use it, it would break. So I had to end up going with abs epoxy sculpt. Now, my sculpt is old. Again, I don't like sculpting. I don't use this stuff that much. Uh, if you know why the top is brown like that, then let me know. But it's pretty good underneath that. I wasn't I wasn't trying to do much here, but fill in the gaps and just give it some semblance of a chest. The original War Machine piece had like a chest piece, but I wasn't thinking far ahead when I cut it. One thing I really like about my process is it works for me. Like I'm able to think of things on the fly. I'm able to make changes on the fly and just do things how I need them to be done. People always ask me how to do things and how do I do this? How do I do that? Outside of making tutorials, um, you really just have to do it yourself. Like I can make a follow along on how I did something and people will still have questions. At that point, you just have to take it upon yourself and try to figure it out. I promise you that'll make you a better customizer. This is where I ended up uh, with this version of it. There is a second version that I've done. I still had a gap on this one. I didn't use any more sculpt. I ended up modifying the chest piece to cover that gap and it worked out pretty well. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, there's plenty of others on the channel. I have tutorials, all of that. Check all of that out. I have links in the description. To Entertainment Earth, you get 10% off using code KITBASH. All that good stuff. Like, comment, and subscribe. Engage the algorithm. All that good stuff. I'm out.